Today's video is RV Tools A to Z. So what brings you in today, John? Well, my name's John and I'm a toolaholic. At what point did you realize you have a problem with tools? Well, it all began, Doc, when I decided to sell my home and all my possessions in full-time RV with a toddler and a dog. I go through days now and I can't stop thinking about screwing things. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. Long story short, we sold most of our possessions in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life's too damn short, guys. And in today's video, we're going to share with you all the tools that we carry on our RV as we full time. When I say all of them, I literally mean all of them. We went Yesterday, we went out. We took every single tool that is on this RV. We laid them out. We got pictures and a little bit of video of all of them. Now, obviously, I'm not going to cover or go into great detail all the individual tools that we have on board, but I think it's a great way to kind of illustrate to you guys the type of tools that I need. Now, this is going to be a little bit different for everybody. If you're a, a professional woodworker, you're going to bring different hand tools than I have. Um, I did not bring a table saw with me. I did not bring a compound miter saw with me. They're just too big and too bulky. If I was traveling by myself, I would probably have a lot more tools than I have with me. So five or six months ago when I started the process of breaking down my tools and starting to try to decide what I needed to take with me, I really, really struggled with this process because as a tradesman my whole life, my tools are kind of a second part of me, right? And I really believe that I need to have all the stuff with me. The problem is, is that an RV, you can only put, on our RV, you can only put 2,500 pounds of stuff on there and I'm traveling with my wife and my daughter so hey what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> well honey you're at least 85 pounds right yeah sure <laughs> sure I am and that's actually a really good point because five months ago when we were taking off to RV full-time we you know he was looking at all of his tools and trying to decide what do I need for my family and he was trying to forecast what situations might come up um, on the road. And so now with five or six <laughs> months experience, I know that I probably overdid it. And the purging that I did yesterday helped me to dump about 100 pounds of extra tools, pretty much duplicates um, and some other things that I'm just not going to need. I don't know how they got on board, but they did like I had two wrecking bars that were three feet long. I don't need to. I definitely need one. Um, and like I said, everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different. And so, but if you watch this video, you're going to get a really good idea of, you know, what we use, what we have with us. And I am going to talk about the tools that are absolutely necessary. When John mentioned in a previous video that he had a really hard time letting go of tools, <laughs> I didn't realize that he was being very serious. He was really struggling with his tools. He was struggling so much that he had to get professional help. <laughs> <laughs> and so later in the video, we are gonna do some more couch time for you guys. All of the items that we're gonna share with you that we carry, we are gonna go ahead and put those links in the description below. What's really cool about these links is if you use any of these links, they will log you into your Amazon account. Whatever you purchase, we'll actually get a small bit and it won't cost you any more money. We really appreciate it. It helps us support this channel. We couldn't do that without the Odd Squad. You guys have helped us so much. So the first essential item that I'm gonna talk about is a TPMS, which is a tire pressure monitoring system. This system monitors your tires as you travel for heat. Uh, as well as pressure and the system warns you if there's a problem with your tires before you have a blowout We chose the tire minder. We're really really happy with it We actually had a problem with the a piece of the system the monitor that you're looking at there on the dash And that company sent us a brand new one within four days The second essential for me anyways is a rear view backup camera that is mounted on the back of my 42 foot rig it allows me to see clearly behind the rig as I'm backing up. If Mercedes is helping me, I will see her back there, even if she's on a walkie-talkie. And one of the really nice things I like about it is, is driving down the highway, I can see behind the rig, and it, it really does help me change lanes. We purchased the Furion, um, and we're not crazy about it, but we're not sure if it is the Furion that we have a problem with or the installation that happened at Camping World. 
we have just a halo view rear backup camera and we will put them up against each other and we will do a video on that in the future. So when you're driving an 8 ton rig down the road at speeds of 55-65 miles per hour, your tires are extremely important. I already spoke of the tire minder, but let's talk about the Vier, which is the um, air compressor that I chose. We did do a complete video on the Vier. I will link to that video now in the top right hand corner. It's always a good idea to have safety cones with you and they also help you park your RV in the parks. A reflective vest is always good to have if you're on the side of the highway fixing a tire so other cars whizzing by see you. Another essential item to have is a breaker bar which gives you more leverage than a tire iron. The next would be a typical tire iron to change the tire on the side of the road. And I like to carry impact sockets for the braking bar and this helps me to help other people that may have a different size lug nut for their tire. And of course you always want to have a pressure gauge to get the correct pressure in your tires. For proper maintenance of your axles and other trailer parts always have a grease gun. Finally, you're always going to need a good bottle jack or some type of a jack system to safely get your trailer off the ground to change a tire. Now a lot of the tools that I'm going over in this video you can cut corners on, but there's some places you don't want to cut corners and one of those places is in your surge protection. A lot of the campgrounds and resorts we've stayed at, they have old infrastructure and um, surges in their system can blow up the wires in your RV causing thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage. I researched this thing for hours and hours on end and these are not cheap, but it's a place that you just should not scrimp. I've met people that have had their whole RV's electrical system be blown up because of the park that they were staying at had inadequate electrical service. So don't cut corners here guys, buy a good surge protector. And because good surge protectors are very expensive, make sure you buy a good cable and locking system so some jerk doesn't walk off with it. So the next thing we're going to talk about is hand tools. And hand tools, I have a lot of them. I have just about everything that I would ever need for just about anything I could ever run into. Clamps, knives, utility, different wrenches, channel locks, um, crimps. Uh, wire cutters, screwdriver sets, but when it comes right down to it, ultimately what you see right here, which is a drill, some bits, uh, an open-ended hand driver, quarter inch, X shank and square shank bits is probably most of what you're going to see in an RV. And here you'll see pretty much an overview of most of my hand tools, um, torpedo level, utility knife, um, needle nose pliers, uh, caulking gun clamps, tape measure. Um, stud finder, uh, screen setter for when you just get screen ripped out, wrecking bar, hammer, there's just too many items to list so I'm going to go ahead and make a list of all the hand tools I have. There's probably close to a hundred and I'll send them to you guys if you request them. The next set of tools that I would suggest would be some power tools and I have both battery operated and some plug-in tools. So I have uh, sawzalls, I have drills, I have um, a saw. Um, I also have a rigid um, multi-tool item that is a jigsaw, a sawzall, and it's a plug-in. You're also going to want to stock up on different blades, drill bits, and such. Um, I also have a Dremel. You just never know where you're going to be when you're camping, and um, the closest hardware store can be 60, 70, 80 miles away. Next items you're going to want is just miscellaneous rain jacket, different types of tape, electrical um, wire snippers. Bungee cords are a camper's best friend. Obviously a socket set is always helpful. I usually keep that in my truck um, and a rubber mallet. The other thing you're going to want is adapters, circuit breakers, um, a dog bone for 30 to 50 amp service. You just never know what you're going to get and I even bought a 30 to 15 amp adapter. You're going to want to have additional electrical cords. I have a 25, a 50, and a 100. Um, always good to have extra cords with you. Another absolutely essential item to have is a water filter. Remember, if you don't filter the water that comes in from the park, you are the filter. So you want to have a good water filter. 
Um, you're also going to want a good water regulator which controls the pressure that comes in from the park into your RV so you don't, don't damage your pipes. You're also going to want to have some really good water hose. So you're going to want to have a 25 foot, a 50 foot, and a 100 foot line. Um, you typically will want to have a dedicated line for your black water tank. I also like to get a splitter. Some of these parks only have one outlet per um, uh, campsite. So with a splitter you can get two hoses on one site. I also like to carry extra washers with me. Um, you don't want your hose leaking because it can make a mess if it's a muddy campsite. I also carry some hose repair kits um, if, you know, again, when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you get a leaky hose, it's kind of can be tricky to get to a Home Depot or a, a hardware store to replace that. So I, I bring an extra with me. I also do carry a plumbing snake out in case I ever get a clog in my dump lines. I pray to God I never have to use it, but uh, I do keep one on board. And then also, uh, when I was in Sedona this year, um, the temperatures dropped below 28 degrees, so I had to buy a short hose. I brought, bought some heat tape, and I wrapped that hose with that heat tape, and it worked out really good. My lines never froze, a couple of my neighbors did and it's always good to be prepared for just about anything when you're camping. Most RVs nowadays, all the plumbing inside them is made with PEX, which is almost like this plastic. So I bring with me PEX cutters, I bring what's called shark bites, which is a quick way to fix a leak or repair that hose. I also like to carry always zip ties. Get the long ones, you can always cut them short, they're very handy to have. Uh, of course, uh, my gun cleaning kit to keep all my um, weapons uh, clean and um, in good working order. I also carry two champion generators that I'm not going to show in this video. I do plan on doing a separate video on those champion generators, but I do like to carry funnels with me. Um, I also am showing a, a propane regulator because the generators that I have are flex. So they run on propane and they run on gasoline. I absolutely love them and I can pair those together. And again, when I do that generator uh, video, I'll get more into that. Bungees, bungees, bungees. Bungees are a camper's best friend. You can never have too many bungees. I also carry two large 24 inch heavy duty uh, steel stakes and I drive those in. For different reasons if it gets super windy i can drive those into the ground and tie the front end of the camper down if it's really windy i'll just hook the camper and hook the camper directly up to my truck which gives a little bit more weight but i can also use those uh, two foot spikes to um, hold down my awnings with rope the next item is my freedom rope this is the newest addition to my uh, tool arsenal. I actually got these when I was in Pismo Beach. I got stuck in the sand. I met the jerk pirates. We're working on a video on those guys. I absolutely fell in love with them, the group, their cause. The rope that I got pulls 52,000 pounds and it works off of kinetic energy. It allows you to get a running start to give that little extra boost without ripping the front end of the other vehicle off. You can get these ropes at freedomropes.com. We are not an affiliate. Um, we will not receive any money for these. We just met the family. We had them over for dinner. We fell in love with them. I became a jerk pirate that night. Uh, they gave me a great deal on this rope. And as a jerk pirate, I can never see anybody stuck out in the desert, the sand, or in my travels camping without trying to help them out and pull them out, never leaving anybody behind. Freedomropes.com, guys. It's a fantastic company, and it's a fantastic product. The next thing I like to carry that is cer certainly not a necessity, but I like to have it, keeping my rig clean and shiny, um, are tools uh, for cleaning the windows on my rig, uh, keeping my truck clean. Um, I do notice that when I'm out in the woods camping, my beautiful new truck is getting loaded with sap. Uh, and a pressure washer. I love my Sun Joe pressure washer. It's fantastic. It only weighs 30 pounds. I absolutely love it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's got a nice little spot in the back of the RV for it. And I use it to clean my truck and my RV. There's one area of tools that when he was shopping for this stuff on Amazon, I thought he was being absolutely ridiculous. And that's in the stuff to wash the truck. Um, some of the, the stuff to get the tar off of um, the truck and, and the RV. 
but actually I gotta hand it to him he was right because in some of these places we have been parked underneath trees and I don't know if it's just because of springtime or what, but we've gotten so much gunk on the so truck. So much gunk. And the RV that I'm yep. really glad that he has that stuff to get it off without scratching the finish. Yep. So I will hand it to him. I carry three ladders with me, a three foot, a six foot, and an eight foot. My wife thinks I'm absolutely nuts, but I gotta have my ladders to access the spots I need. The other thing to consider is different types of products you're gonna wanna use for your RV. Uh, Biopack are these little packets you flush down the toilet. I also like the TST treatment and you always want to carry bleach because you really should wash out your fresh water tanks at least once a month. You would not believe what grows in those tanks. As far as hardware and accessories go, I just don't think you can have enough extra parts and pieces. You try to have just as many screws, washers, different nuts, bolts. Um, and, and also parts to different things that can fail on your RV. I'm gonna do another video on this in the future with maintenance, but um, fuses, you're definitely gonna wanna have a small portable vacuum cleaner with all the attachments. You're also gonna wanna have cable locks um, to protect your RV against thieves and jerks. Um, different nylon line, I like to have a grinder on board. Um, obviously glues, WD-40, slide-out lube, silicone lubricant, um, and I also like to have a no rinse um, for my truck wash. A lot of these parks will not allow you to wash your truck in their park, but this no rinse wash is incredible. It has a polymer in it where you can actually fill a bucket with water, add about four ounces, and with some really nice cloths, you can give you something. You can give your truck a really nice cleaning without you know needing lots of water. The one thing that did break my heart that I couldn't bring with me was my pneumatic tools, right? My air gun nailers, my finish nailers, my brad nailers. Yeah, and, I know what those are. <laughs> and I couldn't bring my air compressor with me, right? That was a tough one to leave behind. What is on my wish list is I do want to get a battery operated um, pneumatic nail gun, a brad and a finished gun nailer because th that would be perfect for an RV. And we've already got some of the trim pulling apart, breaking out of the corners and it's it's really easy to fix but it sure is nicer when you've got a little pneumatic tool to shoot those little brads or finished nails into place. A lot of you members of the RV Odd Squad actually don't receive our monthly newsletter. Yeah, so our monthly update. If you download the top 10 RV must-haves, you'll be automatically getting that. And it's just little announcements. Things like, for example, we're gonna be on the RV Radio Show USA with the RV Wingman. And right. so those of you that are not on that list aren't going to be notified. So, you know, you might wanna sign up for that. But um, again, those Amazon links, it's just like tipping. It doesn't, but it doesn't cost you anything. Any mother issues? How's your relationship with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I've got the best wife in the whole world, but I do feel really bad because when we were moving from the home into the RV, I probably kept way too many tools. So we want to thank you guys so much for the inspiration to do this video. Don't hesitate to tell us what kinds of videos what do you, you guys want. want? Yep. You RV veterans, what did we miss? <laughs> what did we miss? And you RV newbies out there, what tool are you? is your heart breaking to let go of? But it is. <laughs> I've got a whole tool. list of them. Yeah, and then finally, most importantly, thank you so much, but the next video is actually even better than this one. It covers RV myths.